So yes, uh, Veritas, I'm doing a part two uh, response to your video on uh, uh, the presumption of atheism, a project. Uh, I, because, you know, you made an interesting point here. Um, this statement, uh, all beliefs require evidential justification. You mentioned that uh, this in itself, uh, as a belief or, or, or claim, uh, has no evidential justification, therefore it's self-refuting. Um, a, a very clever argument, very interesting. However, um, if you view it as an axiom, uh, as a criteria for decision-making, or an, a, an axiom of criteria of some sort, uh, it, it can be accepted as valid. So to treat it as an axiom rather than an you know, infinite regression uh, would be valid. Uh, all beliefs require evidential justification. I don't necessarily agree with the statement. Um, I mean, it, I suppose it is possible to believe things despite evidence and uh, in the absence of evidence. Uh, so it, a belief in God does not have to be uh, created by evidence, you know. Um, um, I, you know, I have to think more about it, but uh, offhand, uh, there may be some types of belief that just don't require, it depends on the individual, I suppose, you know. Uh, there are also people who are so naive that, and so easily awed that a simple coincidence convinces them that it's a divine hand involved. Uh, that's a sort of a naive belief. Uh, you know, what do you do with that? I mean, I mean you know, that's uh, <clears throat> a sort of childish belief in everything. Uh, also, we should consider whether this statement really applies to ontological beliefs um, or whether it holds true for ontological beliefs but not for uh, beliefs of other sorts. Um, and it's, uh, let's see what I have here, not a, um, can't read my writings. Mm. Oh, uh, so, but it's, anyway, essentially it being used as a criterion of belief. Uh, whether atheism should be adopted as the default position uh, for lack of evidence um, doesn't appeal to me. I mean, I think the default position is uh, um, negative atheism. You know, you withhold judgment. Uh, by the way, uh, um, my understanding is, is uh, negative atheists can't call themselves agnostics because according to the technical definition of ag agnosticism you have to believe that it is not possible for mankind to know whether God exists um, and I don't subscribe to that I don't see why it's impossible for mankind to know uh, I, I don't know how to find out uh, but I don't think it's impossible so I as a negative atheist cannot call myself an agnostic and I do think that the uh, the, the best alternative um, yeah, default, the best default position is what's called negative atheism. Uh, so that you do not accept the belief that God exists and you do not accept the belief that God does not exist. Um, you know, and, and until at some point you have whatever it takes to reach your criteria of, of certitude. Uh, um, Oh, whether there's a game with two separate sets of rules. I mean, as I say, uh, strong atheism, since it's making a positive statement, even though it's a positive statement about a negative phrase, you know, that a belief in the non-existence of God, it is a positive claim. I haven't thought about the subtleties of that embedded negative statement in there, the, the not God, or the... Uh, not exist, but um, I do think that, that they would have to come forward with some positive uh, proofs, you know, or positive evidence that God does not exist, and by evidence I include proof, reasoning, etc., you know, but some sort of arguments. As I say, negative atheism, I don't believe it has to, I don't, you know, how can it actually? It doesn't believe either way, either one or the other, you know, though it's, it's quite uh, engaging to dive into the arguments. Um, uh, you made a statement about negative atheism, the sort of neutrality that uh, that uh, negative atheism purports to to provide. 
is not possible given how our cognitive faculties work once we have been introduced to a claim like this. Um, I, I assume you mean the claim that, that there exists a God or that God exists doesn't change my co cognitive faculties. Um, it's another statement. Um, it, it, it's not really, I wouldn't really call it neutrality. It's not like the middle ground between two warring factions. It's just that a truth value hasn't been assigned to either belief. You know, and I, I should also point out that, that negative atheism doesn't lead to dogma. Uh, theism can lead to dogma, which is blind belief in, in something anyone tells you. Uh, so can um, positive atheism. The statement, uh, God does not exist, uh, as a certitude, presented as a certitude if blindly accepted, uh, is dogma. So both theism and strong atheism have dogma. Uh, weak uh, or negative atheism uh, is much more resistant to dogma in that regard because it uh, doesn't ascribe to either belief. Um, that's all. Uh, as I say, I'm not quite sure your motivation is. I don't know whether what you want to reduce the headcount of atheists or whether you just want to pull people out of the argument unless they're opposed polarly and you only have the people who believe that God exists and believe that God does not exist uh, battling it out. Uh, but uh, all the other people should uh, not be involved. Um, don't know why, but uh, that's a story I, I do uh, believe, as I say, summing up real quick, just the one point, negative atheism is tenable, and in fact I think should be the default position um, in any kind of quandary about whether uh, there exists a God or there does not exist a God. Uh, it's, uh, and I think it's the healthiest. All right, that's the story. Take care, my friend. Veritas, I'm tacking this in on the end of the uh, second part of the video I just made because, you know, what occurs to me is um, theists and uh, atheists of various ilk uh, alike, um, there's one thing that they all agree on is that, um, that the rules of logic uh, are valid. I mean, we're, we all talk about contradictions. We all talk about absurdities, uh, reductio ad absurdum. We all agree on this. I mean, we're all beholden to Aristotle uh, and the syllogism in this regard, uh, and of course later developments. Um, so let me shift now to ask you guys, because I'd be curious to know, uh, what moved me from strong atheism or positive atheism to negative atheism uh, was basically the thought that if logic and the rules of logic and reason and proof, if those rules were created along with the world, then the, the creator would not necessarily be bound by them. And as a result, I could not conclusively prove or disprove the existence of God. I'm not sure if I can actually even say anything meaningful about the existence of God. Uh, and I'm wondering what you guys think. Uh, you know, it's of course it's fraught with all kinds of problems, the question in general, but uh, uh, would you say that, that the, the laws of logic and proof are um, created and are thus separate from the deity? Or would you say that um, they, uh, they are actually also shared by the deity uh, and if so, we sort of get a sort of a euthyphro kind of uh, question arising, you know, uh, uh, do they apply to the deity because they are true independently of the deity, or are they true because the deity uh, has decided that they are true? Uh, in which case the deity might change its mind, you know, and make and change the rules. Uh, or is there a higher form of them manifest in the deity, or that applies to the deity? Um, and what we have here is a weaker reflection of them. If we are created in the image of the Creator, do we have basically just the weakened reflection of a truer, higher um, um, system of proof and rules of proof and logic? 
uh, in any event, the, uh, I'd be curious to know, I've, I've extended that, but uh, this sort of realization that uh, when I was quite young, actually, that, uh, that uh, if logic and the rules of proof are created by the deity, then I, you know, I, I cannot call myself a, a positive atheist. Um, if the deed is free from the rules of logic, then I don't know how we can apprehend this deity uh, intellectually. Um, it becomes an irrational, uh, irrational entity. Uh, so, um, you know, must it therefore necessarily be true that the deity is uh, bound, bound by the rules of logic or that they are inherent in the nature of the deity? That's the story. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.